Nick's flakes are amazing, and if you learn how to work with them properly, you will never want to make a project without them ever again. So today, we are going to learn about a bunch of cool built-in flake utilities and use cases that you probably did not know about. And if you don't know what flakes are, I have a simple introduction video on the channel that explains the basics of working with them, so check that out. And today, we are going to start by initializing a simple flake and wait, talking about initializing. Even before creating a flake, we have something to talk about, and that is templates. If you did not know, you don't have to remember all of the dev shell or Nixos flake boilerplate by heart, and instead can use this simple command to initialize flakes from templates. There is a lot of them to choose from, but if you still miss something, it is absolutely trivial to create your own templates like this basic right shell script bin flake that I pushed to GitHub specifically for this video. The GitHub repo has a following directory structure, with the main flake being in the root and containing reference to this folder which holds the template itself. Let's try it out, and as you can see, it created a flake with a simple hello world script, which we can now fill with some more useful code and turn into a real project. You can have as many templates in your flake as you want, so you can just maintain one for all your needs and purposes and share it with your friends or colleagues so they can also start their projects quickly. After we finally initialized our flake, let's add some inputs. Inputs can come from all sorts of places, but as usual, most are hosted on GitHub, just like the regular Nix Packages flake itself. And yes, Nix Packages here is also a flake, because if you check out its Git repo, you will find a flake file there. This means that like with any other flake, we can check out its metadata with this Nix flake metadata command, and see its revision hash, description, and the URL that was actually used to copy the flake into your Nix store, meaning that you can even straight up replace your flake input with this URL. You do not want to do it though, because flakes are a system that is specifically made so you interact less with these long and impossible to remember hashes, and they are instead automatically saved in a log file and update to a newer version when you run Nix flake update. But what if you have multiple inputs and it is absolutely critical for your project to only update one of them? In this case, we can once again use the Nix flake metadata command to find out more about the flake stored in the current directory, and see that it has multiple root inputs with different commit hashes. We can now use a nix flake lock dash dash update input command to update a specific input from this flake, and after we do, we are going to confirm this by running the metadata command again and checking that the input has changed. All of that is cool, but let's make this process more fun by making a super simple shell script that will give us a nice menu to select which input we want to update. We are first going to pass a dash dash json flag to metadata to output everything in a format that we can easily parse, and then we can pipe this output into a jq command so we can select specific values from it. We are not sure that jq is installed on our system though, so we'll make sure by borrowing it from the nix store with this nix run command. And then we can use this selector to actually get all of our inputs. Let's then remove all of the unnecessary double quotes with sad and finally pipe it into fzf to get a nice menu. This is the result, it automatically looks for the root inputs from the flake in the current directory and allows us to select one of them. We can now put this command into a variable and just use the nixflake log command on its output. I've also put this simple script into a flake and pushed it to github, so you can all use it by running nix run github colon vimjoer slash nix update input. And you can make sure that it exists with a nixflake metadata command and also by running nixflake show command to see that it indeed has a bunch of default packages for every default system. All four of them were added there automatically with the help of flake utils flake, which probably deserves its own video, so I will just briefly mention that this here is just a function that returns a set with all of the system specific packages set to this value for every system. And the last small tip for today is that you can ask Nix to automatically commit the changes to a flake after update with this commit log file flag. And now I would like to thank the sponsors of this video, specifically Victor Vintores for a 20 euro per month subscription, Hoskins for a 10 euro per month subscription, Linux Rocks for a 10 euro per month subscription, Not a Nut for a 5 euro per month subscription, and also GROM for an incredible 50 euro recent donation, and Yogurt and Polycrylate for recent 1 euro donations. You guys are supporting the channel so much that I can barely fit everything on the screen. Massive respect to each person listed here. As usual, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.